this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be starting some fall projects for you, starting off with some Halloween. So today I'm going to be doing a mini glassware witch. Now, if you've been watching my channel, uh, you know that last Christmas I did a glassware snowman. I did a pretty large one and then I ended up doing two mini ones. And y'all seem to like the mini glassware uh, snowman that I made. And then again, I did it again. Uh, in Easter, I made a little bunny, uh, and y'all like that as well, but I think the snowmen were really popular, so I thought, well, why not go ahead and recreate uh, something like it, but do a witch this year for Halloween, and uh, that's what I'm going to do, so I'm going to show you the items that I got. I got my items from the Dollar Tree. I did give myself that challenge to get all my products from the Dollar Tree so they'll be less expensive and easier for you to do and maybe do this as gifts or even sell it for a low price if that is what you wish to do or just for a fun project with the kids. Okay, so let's get started. Let me tell you what I got from the Dollar Tree. All right, so for those of you who recall what I did, I did not use this particular tall vase. I ended up using this smaller, rounder, fishbowl-shaped uh, glassware, and then there was two of sizes. There's this large one, and then there's the one that's just slightly smaller. When I made my mini uh, snowman, I also used another bowl that I got from Hobby Lobby, which is a kind of a fluted on the top. You can decide what you want to use, but to make my witch, I decided that I would use this a longer vase here. Let me see, does it say the size on here? It's a seven inch vase, so here you go. There's not too many different ones there at the Dollar Tree, so you can't miss it. Uh, you can decide to do it uh, with just these if you want. This is a 3.9 by 4.9 uh, bowl uh, in inches. In centimeters, it's a 9.8 by 12.4 centimeters if you want a, an idea of what that is. If you happen to be in a different country and need to find something similar. Okay, so these are the little glass bowls that I'm going to use. Uh, I am not going to be putting little miniature uh, ornaments inside like I did my uh, Christmas one, my snowman, and my, what was it, a little bunny, bunny rabbit. Instead I got some of this uh, decorative shredded paper. You could use the, the metallic one. I couldn't find that at the Dollar Tree, so I went ahead and I just got this plain uh, black shredded uh, paper. Uh, what I did find there was the spider webbing, and I found it in purple, and I thought it would be cute to kind of spread it out a little bit, and then maybe in the middle, stuff the black, so it just kind of uh, makes, so this out, kind of like shows off a little bit better, is what I want to say. You could also pour some paint in there if you want, and just swirl it around, paint it, and then just drip it out so that the outside is glass, and it's not painted on the outside, unless you prefer to paint the outside. Another thing you could use is some Mod Podge inside, maybe mix it up with some glitter, and uh, brush it in on the inside, let that dry, and you'll have a cute little glittery bowl, if you prefer that. Okay, let's see, I got another item here, I got this, uh, it's called a creepy cloth. It's like a, it's like a cheesecloth, but it's, you know, it's not as n tightly knit, but it's a really uh, nice looking kind of a cloth. I really liked it and I thought I'm going to use this somehow. So I'm going to be using that. Now, uh, let's see, I've got some ribbons that I got at the Dollar Tree. I got this pretty black and purple striped, and this is a three yard roll, nine feet, three yards. And this one also the same. This is really cute. It's got some little sayings. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use uh, these particularly large ribbons or if I'm going to use both or just one. I haven't decided, but I've got those and there's a choice there. And I've also got this uh, ribbon. It says trick or treat. I have this left over from last year. I kind of want this for the band around the hat. I'm not really sure. I may use one of these. I don't know. I just have them set out here so that I have a choice. So, you know, get yourself some little ribbons if you're going to be doing a lot of decorating. They're going to be useful for other products or for other projects. And then I also got this package of pumpkin picks, little jack-o'-lanterns. I'm probably only gonna use one of those, so I'll have plenty of this left over. Again, this is from the Dollar Tree, so each item is only $1. So it's very cost-effective. So go ahead and get yourself a little package, some little decorations, and you can take them apart now. I said I wasn't gonna put any in there, but this would be a great idea to set one in there if that's what you wanted to do, instead of doing the paper that I'm doing. They have other things like uh, little mice and bats and other kinds of things. Uh, okay, here, I've got some more shredded paper. That's all I had here to show off. And I did also find these clips, and they're little bats. So I'm going to use them somehow in there. Again, this could be used inside of the glass jar instead of the paper. But I got those. And this tune is probably, I'm 
probably only going to use one. Okay, so now for my hat. For my uh, snowman and my bunny, I used a stiffy felt. Now, the stiffy felt, you cannot find it at the Dollar Tree. It's only at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, um, Michaels, you know, craft stores, places like that will carry a stiffy felt. Unfortunately, uh, the Dollar Tree does not. So I thought, well, let me find something else that I could use to create my hat. They do have poster board. I can certainly use that. I was looking for something a little more, you know, sturdy, something that wouldn't crush easily on me in case I moved it around or it fell over. So I found these placemats. They're just plain old placemats. And I got three. I don't think I'm going to need all three. I'll probably just use maybe one or or part of uh, the second one. So I'll probably be able to make two hats, if, if not three, just at least two hats out of this, if I decide to make more of my witch. Uh, so this is what I got to use. Now, you're looking at it and thinking, well, that's not a good pattern for a witch's hat, you know. No, I'm gonna paint it. So I'm, I've got some uh, craft paint here. This is from Anita's, and it is in the color grape, in case you're wondering what color I used. This is a purple, you could use a black or any color orange if you want to make your hat orange. Uh, I, let, I decided that I'm going to use the purple because this cloth that I showed you, I think I want to use that also to cover my hat with. So I think I would be pretty having that purple uh, seep through the black. And um, as a matter of fact, I, I think I have some glitter that I might pull out because I think uh, some glitter would be pretty on that as well. Just to give it a little bit of a sparkle. Okay, so now, if you do not want to go through the process of making the little hat, um, then you can skip over that instructions because they did have this little witch's hat there at the Dollar Tree. Look at that. It's so cute. It's like a, on wire and it's got this little metallic uh, garland wrapped around it. So it's really cute and it actually fits really well on top of this little glass bowl. So that's an, an option for you if you don't want to go through the trouble of making the hat. Just buy yourself a little hat. Now, if you don't find a little hat, you need to make one. Get something that you can do that with. Okay, let's get to crafting. Oh, let me tell you what my tools are going to be. Uh, so let me go ahead and um, move things out of the way because my tools are now covered up with all my mess. So I'll be right back. All right, so my tools are going to be my glue gun, and I've got some glue sticks for that. I am going to be using some scissors, possibly wire cutters. I didn't grab my floral wire to do my... Um, bows with but I'll go ahead and grab some in a minute. I've got a sharpie pen to do some marking. Uh, I've got my needle nose pliers. I always use those. I never know when I'm gonna end up using them. Um, I do have also a brush to paint my little hat with and some paper, some napkins to protect the area. I also chose to pull out my small cutting mat and my rotary cutter. If you don't have that, you know, just cut on a thick piece of cardboard and do it on top of a table that you you want, no, don't want to get the blade on, you know, cut on there. Otherwise, invest in a, in a cutting mat. You know, Michaels and, and uh, Hobby Lobby, they offer you coupons, and you can certainly use them. And as you can see, I have a small cutting board here. I do have a larger one, but, you know, you can get a small one like this, and it's great for small projects. So it's a good investment to do that and get yourself a nice rotary cutter. And, of course, I've got a straight edge here. So uh, let's get to crafting. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started by creating the hat. And uh, again, if you find that other little hat, then skip over this whole process. I'm putting it at the, at the beginning so that you can skip over this part and then the rest of the video will be uh, how to put it all together. So uh, if you don't, wanna, you don't care to do the hat like this, then skip over this part. Just kind of fast forward. All right, um, let's see. We're going to go ahead and get our hat here. This is going to be the head of my, of my witch. So there's uh, two ways I can go ahead and start this hat. I can start by making the brim of the hat and then making the little cone of the hat. But normally what I do is I, end up, I start doing the little cone and then I do the little brim. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of measure, just fold my mat. The good thing is that it's a nice flexible fabric. Is I'm going to fold it by bringing these two corners together like that. I think a lot of you may know how to do that. You know, if you make little party hats or just made a hat to make yourself like a little funnel, you can use that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use that as my pattern. And what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to trim around the edging here. I'm just going to trim this, just eyeball it. This is kind of big, so obviously this is not going to be my finished size. This is just me getting the, the cone of the hat you know, start it in the shape that I want it. And I probably have to close it even more. 
and I think I like the size right about here. So I, what I've done is I've, is I've rolled it into itself so that I can get this, let's see, this part here about the size of this. Now there's going to be a brim here that's not going to be open, so don't worry if it's a little bit smaller, it's not going to fall in because you're going to put it on a brim. But for now, I like that size, so that's the size that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and trim upward. There we go. And now what I can do is I can either staple it closed, or what I'm going to do is actually hot glue this. And I should have put a glue stick in here before I got started. So let's get that in there. Okay. I'm just going to put some glue in there, Let's see, get it going, and just hold it, keep holding it just till, you know, it's not going to unroll when you, if you let it go, and as you can see I have a little piece here left over and I can make another little out with that. It's probably going to be a little bit smaller, but it's nice to use it as a little, a little tiny little prop. Okay. We're not going to worry about the uh, tippy tip, whether it's close or not, because we can decorate that. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to trim it, just so that I don't have that little hard edge. And I'm just going to put it on here and look at it again. Now, if I look at it, it's kind of slanted. Now, you could go ahead and go with that idea of a little slant that's kind of cute. Her little hat's kind of, you know, slanted off on her head. But if you want it to be a little more, uh, you know, want it straighter, you can go ahead and trim off on one side to sort of kind of level it off. It's not going to be perfect, so don't try to get it perfect. And I'm going to get my seam to try to be in the back anyway. So here we go. And I kind of like that little slat, so I don't want to cut anymore. And then this is where I decide that, yes, I do like the height. So I'm going to leave the height. Obviously, if I, if I was going to cut it any shorter, uh, I cut from the bottom upwards. So uh, just keep that in mind. You're not going to cut at the top. All right, so that's my little comb. So now I want to create my, my brim that's on my hat. Let me see this piece of... Uh, paper is uh, big enough. I kind of want a bigger brim. What I want this, the brim to be is I want it to be at least two inches wider than the opening. This is three and a half. So I probably want to do like make sure I have five and a half. So okay, let's see. Let's. This has a little uh, little corner here, so um, I want to measure inside of that. So I'm just going to make a line. Let's see right about where it's kind of straight right about there it's about an inch inward make a straight line You'll probably do it on the other side it doesn't really matter and now I'm just gonna measure five and a half there's a five and a half right there make a dot or a line five and a half right about there and then from this end inward Trying to align it with these two dots here. Five and a half. And I notice that my Sharpie marker does not write as well on this side as it does on the other side. So maybe you want to mark on the other side. Okay, let me go ahead and draw this straight line also. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting out a square first. Now you could go and get yourself a compass and just Make yourself a five and a half inch square in diameter, in case you're wondering. I mean, a, a circle. I meant to say circle. Wow, okay. Here we go. I'm cutting out a little square here. <sighs> there we go. I cut a little square. And I still have some of this left over, so I'll save that for something else. Now that I've got my little square, this is the way that I do it. You can go ahead and make yourself a perfect circle if you want. I usually just, you know, cut, and, you know, around to try and make a circle here. I just kind of curve around these little corners so they're not, you know, squares. And this sort of kind of makes my, my hat almost a circle, not quite. My brim, I should say. Here we go. So I'm just going to do this. And then you could go now and round it off a little bit more. I'm not going to really do that. I'm just going to where I left it kind of little pointy edges. That's what I'm trimming. I'm trim this one also because I did do the other side. Okay, there. 
All right, so there we go. It's not a perfect circle. Where's my trash? Oh, I didn't make myself a little trash. Oh, yeah, here it is. I'm throwing trash in that thing. There. Okay, here we go. Now, where's my brim? Ah, or the tip of my hat. There we go. Here it is. Now, I'm going to go ahead and now design this so that this is on top of here. But as I can see here, it's not quite lining up flat. So I'm just going to trim off a little bit because I want as much to be touching on here when I glue it down. Now I'm just going to eyeball this. Now you can wait to cut the brim after you've glued this on, okay? You glue it onto center as best as you can. But I am realizing that I should have probably, when I made the hat, I should have probably used the this part, the white, to be on the outside. And the only reason that I'm saying that is because uh, when I was drawing with a Sharpie, it was picking up the Sharpie marker really nice, but this outer part that's a little more slick or glossy is not. Okay, so I'm just centering this. And then of course, like I said, if you can glue it down while it's still a square, then you can cut out your your circle, circle shape. As you can see mine's not a circle. But there we go, that's my hat. That's gonna go on top of here. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it. And on the same paper, I'm just gonna squirt some paint. Oh, and as a matter of fact, I pulled out some purple glitter that I happen to have in my craft drawer. So I'm just gonna paint this as best as I can with the purple. I'm not gonna worry too much about the coverage because like I said, um, when I uh, was uh, using the Sharpie, I noticed that it wasn't really picking it up so well, so I'm concerned that it might not do the same with the, the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush a coating of paint as like my primer, if you will, and um, just make sure you spread it out really well so it dries quickly. And I'm going to let it for a few minutes, let it dry. And then I'm going to come back and do another coat over it. All right, I'm back. And what I'm doing is I've gone ahead and started putting the second coat of paint on. Uh, but while it's still wet, I've gone ahead also and I've sprinkled some glitter on it. So I've put it on the brim right now. I haven't gone up to the top of the hat yet. So this is a choice you can do. You can add some glitter to it. Like I said, I am going to be putting this fabric over it. So I don't want to put too much glitter and waste a lot of glitter because it might not show through. But I feel like the openings on this are big enough that I'm... I think it will show through. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, you can do either or. You can choose to put glitter or not. And they do have some glitters there at the Dollar Tree, in the little crafting area where the florals are in the aisle there. Um, you can even look in the uh, children's uh, toys or the little crafting area, the school supplies area, and uh, see if you can find some there. So anyway, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm just brushing on some paint and before it actually like really really dries I just sprinkling some glitter on there and I already know not to go over it again with my brush because I don't want to mess up all that work with the glitter and of course any glitter that falls here on, on the my paper I can just collect it and sprinkle it on okay so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna continue with my second coat as I said and uh, sprinkling glitter as I go along and uh, let it dry and uh, I'll be back all right, so I am back. My hat has a few minutes that it's been drying. It's not quite completely dry yet, but I'm going to be going to uh, my next step anyway. Uh, for you, of course, let it dry so that it, uh, it nothing comes off or nothing wipes off. Okay, so this is my little glittered hat, as you can see. It looks pretty. I think it does. I could leave it just like that, or I could go ahead and go to my next step. Or not do this at all and just use the already pre-made hats. So at this point, these two hats uh, can now be uh, used on the glass witch that we're going to put together in the next few steps. And then um, you can choose either one. So here we go. Let's move this one out of the way because I'm not finished with my hat. I want to do a little bit more to it. I've got some, uh, some of this, uh, what is this called? Creepy cloth. Yeah, it's called creepy cloth. It's like a cheesecloth almost, but it's like I said, it's got a, a not as tight of a weave. It's got a much larger weave. It's it's kind of cool. Look at that. Can you see that? I want to put this on the hat. Yes, I do. <laughs> We're gonna figure it out because I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut cut off a piece so that it's not the weight of it is not pulling down on it. So I'm just going to cut off a piece, 
and I'll figure out how to drape it on there in a moment. Let's see how big of a piece am I cutting so you'll know if this works out. This is all you have to cut. The hat looks really pretty, all glittery like that. Maybe you don't want to cover it, but I'm going to do it. Okay. Here we go. There we go. This piece that I cut out, just for the heck of it, of measuring it, is uh, about... 15 you cut a 15 by 15 I think we'll be fine but this is more like a well this is 18 inches right here so we'll just say 18 inches is what I cut okay so 15 by 18 piece here okay so I'm just gonna drape it on my hat and see what happens see where it goes from there because you know it's not completely thought out like maybe it should have been a bigger rectangle. No, no, I think this will work. Oh, I'm getting ideas as I'm doing this, you guys. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so I'm going to put this on there. I just draped it over here in the front, just like that. And then the back. See how it does this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim going downward. I want to make sure this top part gets covered before I do that. Okay, so I'm going to trim this, this part off, right here it folds, and I'm just going to trim that off. So I've got my scissors, hopefully this idea is right, <laughs> and I'm just cutting them both at the same time. Okay, there we go. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some glue up here in the top, so this part stays and won't move on me. And like I said, we can decorate this little teepee top with uh, a little flower, maybe some ribbon coming out of it. I have some tulle, some purple. I actually have it in orange too, I think. I'll check and see what I've got. Maybe we can use that to kind of have it poke out. Oops, oops, oops. My fingers <laughs> are catching the glue, so I'm pulling on it. Okay. Let it dry and then and then poke it down. Let it dry a little bit and then poke it down. Okay, so now because I have this little slit here, oh, and I should make sure I should point out that um, the opening when I brought it around it like that, it's on the uh, the the uh, what do you call this? The seam, you know, where I brought it together and glued the little the, the first cone, the triangle that I made, little cone, and glued it right here. This is where the seam is. So I'm just bringing all this around to it and then just drape it over. And I'm just going to just kind of like gather it a little bit, just a little bit. So it kind of has this kind of a little folds in the fabric. I don't want to stretch it tight. And I'm going to get this ribbon and I want to put this around the bottom right here. So I think you get the idea of where I'm going with this. I'm going to measure, but I'm going to cut this just a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm going to start, where's the seam? Back here. I'm just going to turn it around. This is why I wanted this little mat. Now, if you don't have a mat, like I said, a little piece of cardboard or something, so you can twirl this around a little bit easier to maneuver things rather than trying to turn the hat and then, you know, like trying to drape the fabric over it. Okay, so I'm just going to put some glue dots here and there just so this kind of stays uh, closed here and stays in place. Use my scissors to poke it down. And then a little bit more on top of that bit to put this over it. There we go. Just let it catch. Some little dots on the brim part to bring the fabric over. And then the other, the other bit as well. Okay. That's it. that and now I'm going to put a dot of glue again at the back where the seam is where's my here it is make sure that my it says trick or treat on it so I'm just making sure that the little print is facing the correct way upward I'm going to put that right on there and I'm going to bring this around hold it tight so that it doesn't move the ribbon that is against the hat hold it tight down here turn it around 
hold this end tight because you know you just put the glue on there so it's a little wet you can pull it off while you're trying to do this okay so just bring this around as best as you can and it's gonna meet up there so now I'm just gonna put some more glue right there now where my finger is of course and bring this and put it on top and then just hold it till it's dry and that's not gonna move at least and then you can just trim off the little excess bit of ribbon it's better to cut just a little bit longer and end up trying to cut it the exact size and then it ends up being short because you want it also to overlap okay so there we go that's what I did so now what I'm going to do because I like the way this looks all raggedy uh, and there's some ed edges here where it's not as long and some edges where it is I'm just going to sort of kind of just cut it kind of not necessarily perfect and not necessarily the same size as the brim I'm going to let some of it hang over it's, it'll be kind of cool if you have some of it hanging off the edge on the you know on the back but because I don't have a specific front or back to my whole bowl. I mean, you could keep in mind that this is your back. That could be draping off the back of the hat if you wanted that. Look at that. I want you to look at it close up, how it looks. The little hat. That's where I put the glue and I'm gonna go ahead and hide all that. But, you know, you could take some more of this stuff here or you could take some tulle or like I was saying, some ribbon, and I'm just gonna give you a little quick idea right here because I don't wanna decorate it quite yet. You could put that, you know, some tulle or something kind of coming out. You know, like a princess hat would, ha ha. But this is our witch hat, so I think that's what I'm gonna do, okay? So here we go. There's our two choices of hats. And you can decide what you wanna build or what you wanna use, rather. Are you gonna build one or are you gonna buy the one already made if you can find it already made? There we go. Let's go ahead and go over to our next step and put together our jars. All right, so I'm back and I've got my glass containers, my glassware here ready. Uh, I've opened up uh, my webbing here and I've got my paper shred right here so that you can see what that looks like, a little shredded paper. Like I said, they do have some metallic ones, but I couldn't find any at uh, the Dollar Tree. I know I've seen it before, but I think I've seen it like maybe in silver or gold, so that's up to you if you want to use those colors. I don't know if they, they'll they have it in purple or not. They didn't quite have a lot of their supplies filled because they were moving out some of their back to school when I purchased a lot of my stuff. So by now they may have more items, so you might want to look Look and see if they have that. If not, this is perfectly fine. Uh, like I said, you could also use those little pumpkin picks to decorate inside. Uh, I'll show you like a little idea real quick. Uh, these little spiders are so cute. Okay, so this webbing comes with these four little kind of like, they're in like a little ring here. I guess you could use them as a little ring. But then you could also use them to uh, use that to kind of grasp onto the web when you're hanging it. Okay, so then we're going to put these little spiders out of the way because I am going to be using them. Uh, but, okay, so let's get our little picks here. Let me give you a little idea of what I'm talking about. Let's pull out the, the pick, the wood pick out of the little pumpkin. I've got these little bats. Now they do have uh, other little things you could use. You don't have to use a little bat or anything like that. But a cute idea would maybe be to uh, glue a little pumpkin inside. Maybe even a little bat off to the side if you wanted something like that. You could do something like that and then maybe even throw some paper shred in there. Now, when I did the ones for Christmas and the one for Easter, I put a little bit of styrofoam in there, and that way that would give whatever I put in there a little bit of height, so that when you do throw in, uh, like for instance, then I threw in some snow, but uh, now I probably want to put in some uh, uh, some of these shredded. The shredding could cover the styrofoam once you put that in there, so you could do that. But I want to do something else, although I'm really liking this idea. So you know what? Let me go ahead and do that to the bottom part, the idea that I have, and then maybe I'll do this to the uh, top hat or to the top part of my witch's body. This is her, gonna be her body, okay, and her little head and so forth. Okay, so this is her body, but I got this webbing because I wanted to fill it with something, and I didn't want to look for little figurines like I did for the Christmas one because I felt like, well, that's kind of an expensive thing, and I didn't find anything at Hobby Lobby, but if you do, oh, we'll use that because uh, sometimes they do have little dollar dollar figurines, and they might have some for Chris, for Halloween. Oh, my goodness, look at this webbing. It's just, I'm just going to grab a piece off of it like that. Okay, this is fun. All right, now what I want to do is I just kind of want to stretch it out a little bit. 
I'm going to cut off another piece again because I feel like I should do this in little pieces. Okay, I'm going to put this on my hand like this and then push it in like that because obviously my hand is too big and it won't go in there. Come on, honey. You can do this. We will do this, you guys. Let's push in some, put it, push it in like that. There we go. I keep pulling it out. <laughs> wow. I don't want to give up on this, guys. Don't give up on it. You can do it. You can watch me and say, ah, if only she did this, if only she did that. Put it in the comments so the other people can see it. Like, what do you think is an easier way to do in this? I don't want to push it all the way in because I know my hand doesn't fit in there and then I can't pull it out. But I feel like now I can go ahead and push this in. I want to hold these ends because I kind of want to stretch that webbing in there. Let's see if this works, guys. Oh, you know what you could put in there too? The little lights, battery operated lights. And just have the little wire coming off the uh, edge and just don't put any glue where the wire is. But it, it'll pretty much stay in there. And just don't use a... Um, I should mention that if you want this to stay, you're going to sell it. Uh, you probably want to use E6000 glue when you put it together. I use my hot glue gun. Sometimes I use both, um, you know, at the same time. Because I want it to dry quickly and stay together just for the... For the video but i end up using a lot of hot glue and i don't use um i don't use the e6000 because i take things apart later and then i reuse items so that's another reason why i'm not painting this because i may take this witch apart later and then use this little vase for something else okay you guys i'm looking at it and i feel like the the web is getting clustered in some areas a little too much but i do like the effect of the webbing in there and i do like the paper shred in there so i'm going to pull it out because look it's going to pop out all at once so this is a good good way to get this just stretch it out and look in this area there was no webbing at all so let's put some more paper in there make a little a little package, I guess, what you got to do first. So we're learning, right? To a little package. I didn't think this completely through, guys. I'm thinking it through as we're doing this. Well, I mean, it was an idea. <laughs> okay. And sometimes if you watch my videos, you know that I change my mind here and there, and I end up doing something different. Okay, so I'm just pulling it where I feel like it's too thick. And then just pulling it where it's not covering. So just do that. And make like a little pouch like that. Okay? So now we can push it through. Again, let's try this again. Crossing fingers, hopefully this will work. Ooh, it is. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay, now <laughs> try to open that up and stuff it some more with some paper. Some more paper. Okay, right here. I'm going to stuff it somewhere up here on the top part. Pulling this out so it doesn't clump. And then right here, I can just kind of just do that. I, li I, you know, I like that. I like that effect. Can you see it without... Let's, let me twirl it around. I really like that effect. You can skip right over. Don't put the webs in there and just put the paper. Or just put the webs in there and not the paper. Now, um, I wanted to put some of these little spiders in there. So I'm going to push that forward, put a spider there, and then there we go. Can you see that in there? Little spider. Ooh. Okay. Let me do it on the other side. I don't know if I can get all four of them in there. I need to do some serious manicuring, guys. Oops. This one's going, no, it's going right up. I thought I was pushing it in there upside down. Yeah, I like that. Okay, one more. Because I really like the spiders. One actually, this one's here, this one's here, maybe one right here. I'm trying to get it a little bit lower, but I don't want it to like fall all the way and go like underneath all this after all this work. <laughs> okay. So I'm just kind of pulling it back up just a little bit to help poof it up, and then I just push it back down. Let me move this spider a little bit more. There we go. 
Okay, there we go. I really like the spiders in there. I don't know if you can see them, but up close, there's one right there. Up close, you can see it sideways there. Uh, up close, you can certainly see them. One there. I think it looks cool. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and do that one. So let me go ahead and do the other jar. Different because even though I like this, I'm not in love with it. Okay, so I will admit that. Uh -huh. I'm going to get a little piece of styrofoam. Where's the smallest piece I have? There we go. And I'm just going to cut like a little block. That's too big. A little bit smaller. But I want it to be kind of high. I, I only need so much space to glue the pumpkin on. I don't need a lot of space. Yeah, but I do need it to be a little bit high to lift it. So let me see if that's going to be okay. I'm going to put the pumpkin in there just for looks. Well, you know what? Let me go ahead and glue it onto the little block. Because so I could always trim from underneath. I'm going to glue this on there. Like so. Just glue it on. And then I'm just going to put it in there. And then just kind of look at it from the front. Look at it from the front. And this part here, the little tippy tip, is a little too high. I want the face to be a little more centered in the middle of the glass. So I'm going to trim the height of this little block. About half an inch because I feel like that's how much higher it was. I can save this for another one. Now if I put it in there, and now I like that height. Okay, so before I glue it down in there, I'm going to glue it. Well, you know what? I am going to just glue it down in there. Let's pour some glue. Now you would be using the E6000. You want it to be more permanent. I'm just gluing it right in there. Let me move this webbing out of the way. So now we can take some of this paper shred. I don't want to lose this little stick because it was coming in handy. Now we're going to push that in there. Get it all in there. Now if it's too big, if the pieces are too big, you just trim. All right, so the camera decided to just quit on me at some point, uh, but I did show you how the pumpkin looked resting in the paper. And I had these little uh, bats, little clips, and I showed you earlier how one could be in there. I'm gonna go ahead and save uh, one of these bats for another project, and I'm only gonna use one. And I decided that I don't wanna put him in there because I think it'll, he'll be kinda hitting away in the paper shredding. So I'm gonna use this to decorate my hat, and I do have an extra little spider that I'm going to just trim off these this little ring part, probably should use my wire cutters, not my good scissors to do this, but I already did it. And I'm just going to hot glue the spider on top of my little pumpkin inside there. And I need more glue, hello. Okay, let's do this with two hands. Uh, the reason that I was saving the little stick was in case I needed to push things down. So save your little stick, you never know. Okay. My chubby little hands got in there. Okay, so I'm just going to put this little spider crawling on top of the head of the little pumpkin in there. Can you see it? And if you see it from the front, you'll see it there. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we want to glue these together. Now, as I said, uh, if you're doing this at home and you want it to be a little more permanent, use your E6000. Just put some little dots of the E6000. You don't have to put it all the way around. And then you could come with your hot glue if you wanted to do that. You come with your hot glue, put that on there so that you can maneuver, maneuver this on there so at least it stays on there and you know because the hot glue will dry faster and it'll stay on there and uh, you can continue working on it and then just let it dry overnight so the E6000 uh, is set. But uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use my hot glue gun. I'm going to see which side of this I like the best for the front and uh, I'm pretty sure that I like I want to move the spider a little bit more because it's too close to the one I want in the back. And of course, it's not going to be easy to move because it gets caught in the webs, which you want that to happen. Okay. This is going to be my front. I've decided because I like the way this looks best. Uh, you can't really tell uh, in the video, but uh, because of all the glare from the light, I have to have lots of lights in here so that. Everything is lit up for you. And this is, of course, the front of my, the head of my witch, if you will, the uh, side where the pumpkin is showing. So, I, again, I'm just going to be using my high glue gun, putting glue along 
the edge here. And I don't mind if some of those glue webs get in there because, you know, <laughs> they'll just look like spider webs. But I don't want the glue dripping down, so just be careful. And again, carefully place it so you don't smear a whole bunch of glue everywhere. And there we go. This is the body of our witch. We want to start decorating her. So we can put either, let me move the camera back a little bit. I will be back. All right, so here we're going to get to the point where now we're going to finish decorating her, our little witch, our little mini glassware witch. And I can either put this hat on her. And she looks so cute. Look at that. Look at the hat on top of there. That looks so cute. Or I can use this other little hat. And that looks just, just as cute. But... I want to put the hat that I made on her. So I'm going to put some glue along the edge here. And some glitter is falling off because it's the excess glitter that didn't get glued on there. So that's okay. I am going to put glue, either E6000. But I'm using my glue gun. I just and it kind, of, kind of work kind of fast because this glue dries fast. And then just kind of try and center it as best as you can. There we go. And just make sure the back is to the back. So there we go. That's all I did. Look at that. She's so cute with her little hat on. Look at that. And she's tall. She's a tall little arrangement. All right, so now we want to decorate her. She's so pretty. Okay, I've got some floral wire that I forgot to mention at the beginning. <coughs> and I've got my bows. And I've decided that I want to use this one with all the print because I did use this printed the white with a print at the top and I'm going to be using more of this on the top but I want to use this one around the neck area right here so let's go ahead and cut a piece and I just want to do just a like a little like a little scarf if you will but I, I do want it to create a bow so I'm going to leave this to be long enough and let me tell you how long that is it's about 36 inches about you're probably going to end up trimming some of it so if you want to cut it 30 inches that's fine so 30 to 36 inches of ribbon and I'm going to tie it around her cute little neck here not too tight because I don't want it to scrimge you know to you know get all folded the ribbon I want it to stay open as best as I can and the best way to do that is probably to put some little dots of glue on the jar glue the ribbon on the edge there let me turn it around so I can see what I'm doing. Put some right there as well. Put the ribbon right on there so it stays up on the top part. And I'm going to do the same on the other side in the back here. Just get that, just get that to hold there. You can give it a few seconds and then, you know, tighten it a little bit. And then make a bow. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a simple hand bow little loops and then pass it through and bring it up and just kind of look at it and see if you just want to make it smaller loops and I'm probably going to pull it just a little bit pull a little bit I feel like my my loops are getting to be too big and this tighten there we go okay so I'm just doing a little bow here Making it nice and poofy and pretty. And because it's wire edged, I can twist my ribbon so the pretty side is always forward. And then I'm just gonna do like a little, little dovetail cut here, like that. Do the same to the other one. Let's fix this now so that it's uh, forward and I like to kind of bend the tails a little bit kind of bend them so they're doing like little waves so just bend them a little bit with that pretty little bow on the side it's not covering anything oops you know what I just noticed that her face is way over here and the bow is way over here all I'm gonna do is just pull it off off the glue a little bit and I'm gonna make a mess you guys but uh, you just make sure that you do it right before you glue it down 
make sure you notice where her, the front of her face is. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to pull it off and twist it around. And then just glue it back on because I don't want it to move again. Or, you know, not move again because it didn't move on me. I just put the, the bow, the knot, in the wrong place. And... <laughs> It's nice and tight, or I glued it down really well. There it is. Maybe. I don't know. Come on, honey. Where are you still glued down on? There we go. Let's do it this way. Maybe because it was so tight it wouldn't move. Okay, so now all I'm doing is I'm just making sure the face of my little pumpkin is facing forward. And I don't want my bow in front of it. I want it off to the side. But it was way off to the side, almost in the back. So now that I know where I want it, now I'll go ahead and glue it back down. Hide my mess so that you guys don't see it even though you know I did it because I'm showing you. I'm not going to edit this out. And now what I'm doing is I'm, I am gluing down my little loop. You know, I put some glue behind my loop and I'm gluing it down to hide where I kind of messed up the, the ribbon a little bit because this is not the best quality ribbon. So this wired edge little trim here kind of pulled off a little hole there. So I'm just covering, I'm just covering up my mess. That's what I'm doing. I don't need to take this completely off and then just do another one. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Where I'm going to put some glue down this way. Glue down my little bow, my loop. Okay, so now I'm just going to wait for all that to dry. And any, any uh, glue webbings, don't pull them off while it's wet because all you're doing is stretching them and and they're getting thinner, so, and then they're gluing down, and then it's harder to remove them, and they're a mess. So leave them alone, and uh, when it's dry, then you can pull them off, and they'll come off real easily. Uh, someone gave uh, a great tip in the comments some time back, and said you can use your glue gun, I mean, sorry, your blow dryer, you know, your hot blow dryer, blow on it, and the hot air will uh, melt the little webbings, and they'll fall off, they'll blow off. Okay, so I just need some, a piece of wire, and of course my wire is all... I'm still using the same floral wire, guys. This little roll of floral wire just got all tangled up on me. I'm adamant I'm going to finish that up. I'm not going to start up a new one until I have finished that one because, you know, I'm cutting little pieces of wire. So I'm just getting a little piece of wire, and I'm just going to make myself a multi-looped bow that I can now. This is the front of my... This is the front of my, my little witch. I want to put a bow on the side here. And, yeah, just do some... Let me give her... I think I'll put her on this side because she's got already a bow on this side. Leave her a nice little long tail. This is not the choice of ribbon for making little bows because it's it doesn't have any wire and I like to use wire ribbon because then I can make nicer little bows. And I made, and if you want to learn how to make uh, handmade bows, I do have a, have a video on that. I have two videos on it actually. And one I did like uh, in 2017, uh, like I think it was early November or late October. I think it was early November. And uh, before I started doing all my Christmas crafting, I did a video. So if you want to look that far back, or also in spring, I did another video on basic hand, hand, handmade bows. I think I called it creating handmade bows. I'm not sure. One of the other, one of them is called basic handmade bows, and the other one's called creating handmade bows. Something like that. If I do remember, I will link it in the description box. Okay, so now I'm going to put some glue here on this side, because I said I wanted my bow on this side. And I'm just going to push down on it, just like that. Look how cute she's looking, guys. Okay, now, when I was making the hat, I mentioned, uh, now if you skipped over that, then you don't know what I said, but uh, I mentioned while making the hat that uh, the top part here, the tip of my hat doesn't look all that attractive because I didn't tighten it good enough or well enough. Um, so I have a little little part there that shows. I could have painted it, whatever, but I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some tool, and I happen to have some tool. This is from the Dollar Tree, so I'm not veering away from using products from the Dollar Tree, because this is a Dollar Tree challenge. Okay, this is a sparkle tool, and I got this from the Dollar Tree. This is a label on it, and I just got it this year. As a matter of fact, I went there and I bought 
as much as I could. I bought different little things that I thought I would use because, you know, I, in my head, I knew exactly what I was going to use for what, what I was going to use for what. Uh, but that was like a, a few days ago. And now that I'm trying to do my actual craft, I'm like, oh, I don't remember. I have so much stuff. I don't remember what I was going to use for what. So I just remember the basic idea of, of how I wanted to do the witch. I don't remember what materials I bought for her. I, I, do, I think I, I bought another ribbon this width, but it doesn't coordinate with this look. So I guess I got it for something else. Oh, I know what I got it for. I just remember, but I'm not going to tell you because it's a price. Okay, so now I'm just going to get some of this tool. Um, this is about 16 inches. I have it folded, though. And I've just folded it together, and then I'm just going to gather it at one end here. I don't know. Does that look cute? I think it does. I like it. It could be cute like if it was hanging like really long and also to the ground, but I just think this is good enough. And I'm just gonna put some glue at the top here. And then I'm just gonna push. You can wire this little bit here, gather it together, or just, you know, hold it with your fingers and then just push it into the hole that's up at the top of your little hat, if you happen to have that hole and you wanna cover it. Because, you know, that could happen. So that's it, I just tucked it in there. A little bit of glue and that's it and I did mention that I did have some flowers but I'm not gonna pull them out because I think it's looking really pretty as she is uh, I was thinking that I still had a spider left but I just remember I put the spider in there okay so these are all the materials that I got and I still have this little bag this little bag has like a little clip on it where you can just clip him so I'm just gonna go ahead and clip him to the bow right here on the side right there look at that I feel like this is my finished my finished product and I really like it so there we go here's my finished mini glassware which let me move the camera so you can see her a little bit better and then of course I will be panning the camera over her so you can see the little details and I'll be back all right everyone here is my mini glassware witch She's all finished. I think she looks super cute. You could obviously decorate her a lot more than what I have done. I like her simple. Uh, that way I don't use as many materials and she is a little more cost effective. This is a challenge that I gave myself to get all my product from the Dollar Tree. Uh, let me see, what did I use that was not from the Dollar Tree? Oh, probably the glitter. But like I said, you can find some glitters at the Dollar Tree. If you don't, then just skip that right over. And of course, uh, my paint, I didn't get it from the Dollar Tree. Uh, but you could use uh, either, let's see, you could have it covered all up with your glitter or you could put this fabric that I put on here. You could just put it on numerous uh, layers of it so that you have a better coverage. Or if you find a placemat, which I, uh, I didn't look, so there may be a Halloween placemat that you could use and it'll have a little cute little print on there. It doesn't matter where you cut it. I think it would be cute. So there you go. There's my idea. I hope you like it. I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up. Please give me a big old thumbs up. Leave a nice comment down below. Um, I appreciate all your ideas and all your helpful hints. If it's, it's constructive criticism, it's welcome as long as it's nice. That's all I ask. Okay, so there we go. There's my little witch. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, thank you to all of you who have. Uh, you made me very happy. You're encouraging me to want to do even more. And, of course, that gets a little juices flowing. I have a ton of ideas. It's just like, which one? When should I do it? And now that, well... Christmas is coming. I want to get those videos up a little bit earlier. So I want to do fall. And I didn't do Halloween last year, so I thought I'd do Halloween this year. So I'm going to have some Halloween, a couple more Halloween videos coming for you. And then I'll start doing some fall. And then, of course, the Christmas. And uh, I'm probably not going to have as many cooking videos on my Fridays. I, I might substitute them for a craft video only because I feel this time of the year people are really looking for craft videos because they did really well last year and I want to do the same this year. And of course it helps me and that uh, I can continue making more uh, videos for you. So that's what I intend on doing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, long story short, share on your social medias and as always, enjoy.